Germany's Volksgrenadier divisions entered combat in late 1944. Unlike previous infantry divisions, which had been systematically downsized in the course of the war, the Volksgrenadier division was a thorough revision of tactical organization, meant to make the most out of Germany's final manpower and heavy equipment reserves. The Volksgrenadier division was originally intended as an emergency blocking unit, but was repurposed as a frontline infantry division. Most Volksgrenadier divisions were built from the remnants of divisions that had been shattered in the bloody summer battles of 1944. Their core of surviving veterans was reinforced by hastily trained manpower, pulled from the other services, convalescents from hospitals and men previously deemed unfit for combat. However, the Volksgrenadier division was still a frontline unit, not to be confused with the German Volkssturm, which was a lightly armed local militia. The intended tactical role of the Volksgrenadier was as a defensive unit. Their relative success in this role led the German army to consider standardization of all its infantry divisions into the Volksgrenadier template, but the war ended before this could be realized. Despite the last-ditch nature of this organization, there was also great tactical innovation, based around a revolutionary shift in small unit firepower, made possible by the Sturmgewehr assault rifle. This was a completely new class of weapon, combining the close-range firepower of a submachine gun with the practical range of a rifle. Volksgrenadiere were one of the few units to be formally organized around it, in the form of the Sturmzug, the assault platoon. However, the limited production quantities of this weapon meant that few, if any, Volksgrenadiere were actually organized this way. Yet as a purely paper organization, it gives valuable insight into the practical use of the world's first mass-produced assault rifle. Shown here is one of the six infantry battalions that made up the Volksgrenadier division. It follows the conventional structure of a headquarters, three rifle companies and a fourth heavy weapons company. At the head of the battalion was the commanding officer, assisted by a small staff and messengers. The communication section was largely unchanged, operating both wired and wireless equipment for internal communication. The biggest change was the expanded battalion train, now called the supply platoon. This unit was responsible for sustaining the entire battalion, now that the companies no longer had their own supply trains. It was horse-drawn and housed specialized personnel such as tailors and blacksmiths. Some of the biggest changes took place in the rifle companies. These were streamlined by removing the company supply train and heavy weapons squad. The three rifle platoons that remained were asymmetric. One platoon followed the traditional format of three identical squads, each with a single light machine gun and multiple riflemen. The other two platoons were the new assault platoons. An assault platoon consisted of two assault squads, fully equipped with the new Sturmgewehr, and one fire support squad equipped with two light machine guns. All squads were reduced to eight men. The company's special weapons were now pooled at unit HQs. Three rifle grenadiers at each platoon HQ and six snipers at the company HQ. This streamlining of the company into more specialized subunits was primarily done to ease the burden on hastily trained junior commanders. All heavy weapons were now concentrated in the heavy weapons company. It fielded two heavy machine gun platoons of four guns. These were the same MG42s as the rifle companies used, but mounted on a tripod and operated by a larger crew. A platoon of six 8cm mortars provided indirect fire support. Finally, and most unusually, the company fielded a platoon of four 7.5cm light infantry guns. These had always been organized in their own company at the regimental level, but were now assigned directly to the battalion. This weapon could fire high explosive shells both directly and indirectly, as well as hollow charge anti-tank grenades out to a few hundred meters. Speaking of anti-tank, the battalion's only organic tank defense besides the four infantry guns was the short-range single-use Panzerfaust, which was handed out directly to the rifle companies. The longer-range multiple-use Panzer Schreck was organized at the regimental level in an anti-tank company. A platoon of 18 launchers was frequently attached to the battalion. Medical care consisted of one medical officer running the battalion aid station, one medical NCO for each company and a medic for every platoon, with troops from the supply platoon acting as additional stretcher bearers. Finally, in terms of transportation, the Volksgrenadier Battalion has regressed almost completely to horsepower, although this was less of a problem given its defensive nature. As was typical of German infantry, horse-drawn baggage carts were used down to the platoon level to carry the equipment of troops marching on foot.